Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm here with Michael Braveheart Jensen for week uh, 10, uh, excuse me, week 11 of the Survivor Pool series. Um, as usual, we're going to go over uh, what we did, what happened last week, and then proceed onward to uh, to this week and beyond. So my week was very, very simple. Um, I, my, myself, I was only in one remaining pool, and uh, Vegas was basically a lock for me, and I played them, and they lost. So my personally, I'm out of my survivor pools, but we are going to continue to press on and do these podcasts. Um, why don't you uh, go on, say what you did, your logic behind what you did, and then we'll uh, get into this week. Uh, I'll explain my logic, but I, I'll need uh, I'll need you to jump in and let me know if it made sense. Um, so we had my partner and I had three entries left out of twenty three, uh, strong entries. Um, we started using up uh, some of our Buffalo in Philadelphia, though, in prior weeks because our entry, we had three entries and they were all so strong. We didn't want to, we didn't want to be dropping when we had so many entries. Um, so we, we have two left. Um, I had, I had mentioned to my partner on like Tuesday, Hey, you know, if we if we, if we drop, we, there's only two plays to, if we drop and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Chicago or, or Atlanta. Um, and he, uh, he kind of like breezed over it. And then he came over to my house on Thursday and he's like, you know what? I've been thinking more about Atlanta. Um, and, uh, I mean, bad news. We did take Atlanta. Um, our, our reasoning was, um, we were going to have to take, we didn't want to use two Kansas city. We were very certain of that. Absolutely not. So, yeah. So it, it, with that being the case and not having any Philadelphia, remaining um we had to take we had we had to drop and we were never going to take buffalo obviously um with with the injury situation and then then just being more valuable for later um we were we had concerns about what the ownership was going to be on the giants in las vegas basically it, it was it was hard to it's just hard to decipher we were going to just you know audible toward las vegas because you know only half the people had them you know just, just hope it worked hope it works out um that would have worked out numbers wise, but not results wise. Uh, so we took Atlanta and the thought was if we got one through, we were going to play very aggressively on Sunday. And if we lost, we're going to be like, you know what, let's just wave the white flag and play conservative. By conservative, I mean either going one Kansas City, one Las Vegas or two Kansas City. Uh, luckily, we chose the two Kansas City route uh, from that. Um we probably would have went uh, Chicago. My, my partner said he was going to push Tennessee. So I guess, and I would have let, I, 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 didn't, I didn't care. We probably would have went Chicago, Tennessee if Atlanta had won. So we got, we got uh, two entries through anyway, but um, you know, it would have been nice if Atlanta had won, we would have got two through, but still had our Kansas cities. But you know, that, that's, that's what we chose. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on taking Atlanta to start the week in our situation? Well, I thought of, first of all, I think that Thursday games are typically very low owned in general. Um, so, yeah. so I think that Luckily, was no one, no one else did it. So that's why we really considered yeah, it. Yeah. So I think that was pretty sharp. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I surprised you took want to take any Kansas city. So, so um, I would, uh, I would support it. I, uh, again, I thought that uh, I pro I thought Vegas was probably better, but like I said, yeah. um Atlanta is certainly lower owned than Vegas. That was for sure. Um, yeah. Ours I think two, overall, ours I the, two, win, only overall, two Las the, Vegas in ours. Only two Las Vegas. What's that? Only two people took Las Vegas. 11 had them. Only two. Yeah. But we were two of those 11. So. Yeah. So I thought Atlanta was okay. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't have used Kansas City anywhere. Um, but again, that depends on how, what, if, if you can deal with 15 in some way, you know, because that was not strategic, though, Eric. That was, uh, that was, that that was, was necessity. That, that was a, you know what, we just want to stay alive pick. Okay. So he, I, and I mentioned this before the season started. I, I make fishy picks, too. And that was just like, you know what, we went for it. But uh, let's just, t you know, advance. And, so, let's, so, and, so, so, so let's, so let's, with that said, you posted a lot of, a lot of stuff in our Discord channel. Mm -hmm. And I want you to kind of go over that because, yeah. you know, it's funny when, uh, when I played Vegas, I, I had a feeling that even if Vegas won, I would be put to a really interesting test this week. Um, and you're probably in, in that same boat, at least philosophically, 
So I, I would have had Baltimore available, right? But I intentionally faded Cincinnati earlier so that I can keep Cincinnati as an option this week yep. so that I could push Baltimore back to 16, 17, or wherever else, right? So so the, the issue with that was going to come up with me, you know, me being kind of an EV whore that I am, you know, I would have seen, I would have seen the, the board, I've seen that there's probably like a 10 cent gap between between Baltimore and um and Cincinnati, even though Cincinnati be lower, you know, low on the result, it doesn't change the fact that it'd be like big seven point spread gap, which would make it yeah. you know, a, 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 even a clear EV play to play Baltimore. So I'd be put in a very, very difficult spot about, you know, the, listen, difficult is part of Survivor and that's part of the fun of it is trying to weigh EV versus future value and, and mapping. So I would actually have been put in a tough spot this week with me and my partner probably going back and forth between Baltimore and, and Cincinnati pretty much all week long. And it's nothing that that the math could could determine the answer to. You know, it'd be it would really be be what wh whether I thought I could live with Baltimore now and get and get through later, or whether I felt I would have to take my shot with Cincinnati and and save my Baltimore. So you know, when you post in your Discord a couple of paths involving Baltimore, so it seems as though you're kind of you're in the same type of situation. So let's 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 rewind and take stock of of where you are right now. So tell me the pools again that you're in. And, and and let's let's go through like like what you know what your approach is for this week. But 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 before we do that, actually, let's do that first, and then we'll go through the plays. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the pool I got knocked out of. Um, okay. So I, I I lost my last entry in the one with uh, double picks in 12 and 13. There are a little over 100 left. Okay. Um, I took Las Vegas. Um, absolute clear play. Um, yeah. I, I think I had Chicago available. Yeah, I, I know mo people, people. You probably definitely did, but I definitely used them in some of my entries. But I think I did. No, I did. I, I just I took Las Vegas because I thought they were going to win. Yeah. Uh, luckily, Chicago lost too, so it didn't really make a right. difference. Um, that 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 I was setting up twelve and thirteen. Um, that pool I had used Philadelphia, but I'd set up a really amazing run out, and it didn't work out. Um, but what I wanted to mention about that is my uh. Have been updated. One of my poker friends, had, he had nine entries left in this pool out of like a little over a hundred, and he sadly lost all nine of them this week. Uh, it was, I it was very painful. I, I can't even imagine. I, I I felt like I felt some of the pain, but I, I really liked his strategy. Of course, the message board did not like the strategy, and I made the mistake to chime in because I was having an annoying having an annoying day. Um, but no, you, know, you didn't make the mistake of doing that at all. Listen, my message boards are very educational. Everybody. Oh, no, you. different. No, 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 no. Oh, on the, for the site for the, for the pools run. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> okay. For the pools run. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I liked his strategy a lot. I don't know what I would have done, but I, I think given his strategy, he was drawing dead. Um, he had nine entries. He wanted to keep certain teams the obvious ones for double picks in 12 and 13 and he wanted to keep his dallas and buffalo for 13 14 um he wanted to keep his kansas city so he took three different teams and they all lost and i and i really like the teams he took he he full faded the giants which was correct they were 20 percent picked yep. um he took five las vegas or some four or five las vegas and they lost um obviously i think they were like 11 percent picked um, he had two on the Rams. He was the only one to take the Rams. He had two of them. They lost. And then he took Chicago and they, a few people, other people took them. Um, you know, it's easy to look at that strategy and laugh, but the reason I wanted to bring up his misfortune is it's going to, it's going to come into the conversation later when we're looking at certain weeks for why we're making certain decisions, um, in, in, in the current week to set up easier decisions for later weeks so, so, where the so money what, really what, matters. What, so more. what pools are you left with right now? Uh, I, I I just have uh, seventeen left. We have two entries. That's it. And, and is that the playoff pool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and and it's single entries until the playoffs. Correct. Okay. So I just want to just I want to say one. I want to I want to actually brag. I want to like talk about good beats and bad beats. So I couldn't help but think that when when the pool that I won back with Tampa, yeah, I kind of gave up value, right? Because I had Tampa, and the other guy had Tampa, and we both lost. Technically, I had a better entry than he was. So technically, I kind of lost value, even though I was able to, to cash out. But the way it worked out, I would have lost all of it because I was yeah. such a big shot that I was able to save Philadelphia. And I was going to hammer him 
with Philadelphia. I was going to put half, put it right on his freaking head. I was going to yep. chalk out with Cincy and nine and then 10. Come on, Philly, right on your freaking head. And I would have gotten zero. So, so, so sometimes, sometimes things kind of work out. Um, no, I mean, when I was watching that game, all I, I wanted Philly to lose because two people had them. So that's how we got from 19 to 17. But all I could think about is my last circuit entry. And it was, totally. it was a sense of relief because I don't remember the first one, but the Indianapolis entry uh, was better than the other one. And our path was out. We were going, we were going New England the next week. They won. And we were most likely going Philly so we can save our Kansas city. So we were hypothetically out of, uh, of that. And that, that, that gives me some, some peace of mind. And that would have been a particularly uh, hurtful way to lose. Given so I, I want to share one, I, I want to share, I want to share one other industry bit of news. So this, this to me is very interesting. So I don't know if people follow us, but Mike Mattisau was live in Circa and, uh, and he lost with Philly this week. And, yeah, I and, heard uh, that. And he whined about it after the fact. And he was just on tilt. You know, he whined. He's like, I told my partners I don't want to pick Philly. I don't want a division game. I don't all, you know, all the nonsense, right? And and, and yeah, the that, nuts too. But yeah. but what I find really interesting is I want to put this up here where he should be more tilted. So this is a pool. This is this is one of the sharper pools out there. I was been yeah. out of this since I think week one. Um and this is something that very rarely happens. And this is like a terrible, terrible bad beat. All right. So you look yeah, literally there. back to back weeks. So this, so two weeks ago, he had Philly nine, and three people had Kansas city who was basically dead to Houston, to Tennessee. And if yeah. Casey had lost, he would have won the whole pool. And that's bad enough. But then one week later, wow! Oh my same God! I mean, wow! He had KC, and everybody else had San Fran, who was basically a coin flip down the stretch to the Chargers. So he's busily whining about having made a bad play and having made a good play in, in Cirque and losing. Where I'd be like a mega tilt from both of these. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Eric. You know, it, someone was asking. Some I was talking to a friend about you know you know hedging, and they and I said I said I told him what the best hedging was. And Madison was in a back-to-back week. So the best hedging is winning your first game and everybody else being on another team, and you and you have time to figure shit out. I mean, these were these were in the prime time slots, Sunday night football. You went up front, and I mean, yeah, he did. He Apparently knows the he right people. Yeah, I mean, you know the right people. I mean, I'm in Kansas now, so we, we have live betting. Uh, all you got to do is start hammering that, uh, you know, that button, just betting on. You know, I mean. It, I mean, you, you can't really live money. You can't bet Kansas City money line to start the game because it's, you're laying too much. But they were an underdog at one point. You know, I, I like to hope that if he didn't, you know, do that you know, two weeks ago, that he was prepared. And I hate, I hate for, to say this, but I actually bought, bet Kansas City at plus one forty in the fourth quarter because I had so much equity in them losing. <laughs> oh, I knew they were going to. I knew. They, I knew they were going to. I knew. They I did a little bit. So let, let's. Oh, that's let, pretty let, painful. Let me talk. Uh, uh, let me talk in general about this week. Then we'll get into your pool. Yeah. So again, we want to do the same thing as as normal. Although, as as we've gone over, I mean, to get to this point in the season, popularity numbers are pretty relevant. You're going to have to, you know, whatever. Just, just, just for process. Um, I am going to still rank these by EV, and let's just start. And you, you're going to see, by the way, throughout the rest of the season, a bunch of teams above 1.0. And the reason for that is because just nobody has these teams left. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. that's why these teams are going to look this way. Um, but if you do have these teams left, it's still a very important, you know, distinction to be made. So, like for me, so funny. Like I took, we talked about this last week. I didn't even think San Francisco existed, right? Because I burned them so early, and it turns out so. Yeah, me too. Last week and me this too. week they also are, are are in play. So let's look at all these. So. Well, Baltimore is, is different, but let's just look. So we have Philly, KC, San Francisco, Buffalo, Baltimore. Let's try to analyze these. If God forbid you actually have these available. So I think that if you have Philly available, you know, I have to say that I'm not as familiar with the rest of the board as I once was since I've been busted. But 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 I guess that they actually are very usable in 13 if you don't have anything available there. They definitely have some value in 17 if you don't anything valuable there. So they they definitely have some some value, and not to mention 18 as well. Kansas City, they have, as we talked about quite a few times, just insane value in 15. Um, so it'd probably be the most likely one to save if I had both those available. San Francisco, they could be played in a very tough week 12. 
which is that's actually a pretty big deal actually now that I think about it. No, I, I got notes for that one. They could be played in 16 and sort of in 18, so they could be saved a little bit. Buffalo, as usual, has all kinds of value, not to mention 14 and pretty much every every week. And Baltimore, um, they, and you might think, well, everybody's like, well, why are they they're lower EV than all these teams? Well, simply because they're, you know, they're own 40% plus, right? They have a higher winning percentage, but they're 44% plus. And they have pretty big, they have, they have pretty big value in week 16 and 17. So all of these teams kind of have their have their advantages to be held. I think if I, I had to rate them, if you do somehow have Philly available, I think you, I think that might be a good time to use them. Um, I don't know. Uh, Buffalo, not really. Baltimore, not really. I, don't, I It's actually kind of tough for me. I mean, I, I know I, I don't want to use Kansas City because I want them for 15. I don't know. I, I guess I defer to you on this, on this whole bunch. I, w- I want to make one comment that I'd like you to show the my Discord picture oh, in, yeah, the, in yeah. the chat because uh, I'll make one comment on, on these teams and then I want I want to go over this first because I think it's more important. Sure. But if you have Philadelphia, I, I think it's more or less a mandatory pick. Okay. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on how many you have left and what people have. But we know people don't have Philadelphia. It more no. depends on what you have, but. Uh, it's, it's safe to say that if you have Philadelphia available, that is your best pick. Um, I, I, you know, there, there are going to be exceptions, um, but you will have other options in some of these other weeks. And, you know, I just wouldn't be looking at week 17 right now. Um, okay. If I had Philadelphia, I'd rather drop them now because no one else is going to, you know, you, you'll probably be the only one in your pool. So the reason I think this is relevant. So I, my goal each season is this is, is, this, the, is, this the, is this the screenshot you want yeah uh-huh. okay. is that the one with 17 teams or, or 19 is it the, is the, is the latest the most one recent, I, it's the most recent one okay. okay so my goal is to get to the stage of the season where i make one of these because that means i think it, it's it's starting to get exciting um this is this picture is how is everything i, I don't look at any of the other stuff this this gives you a visualization of not just what everyone has, but what your weeks are that you have your greatest advantages over your opponents, um, the, beta, the the largest discrepancies between your pick and the herd picks, um, and most importantly, the likelihood in which your pool is going to end. That That is the one that's most important because what I have here is I'm kind of like mapping and I'm also putting out what – you know, there's a group of picks that someone had, like for some of these weeks, I just put two or three teams. And that means they don't have anything better than that. They have that and worse. Um, if there's one team, that means it's, it's a pretty high favorite they have available. Um, my, m- our entries, my partner and I are the, are the top two rows. And the way that I look at this is I try to compare it to the ones that look similar to mine, because I want to see at which point I have a a different run out than opponents with similar paths as mine. If I were to go the more chalk, you know, higher favorite based strategy you know, for, for my picks. Um, Cause when you look at it this way, you might think you have this unbelievable run out, but if seven other people have it with 17 left, it's not that great. And if, and if that's the case, you need to find other ways to pivot to create a different path that's more unique, that gives you a chance to, you know, maybe not scoop, but not, not be on there with so many players. Um, in my pool, you can make a deal in this one when there's 12 or left remaining. It's the, it's the final 1% or less. There's the option, you know, to start deal making. Um, you know, so the, the, the reason I, the, the, the best way to look at this is looking at week 16. It, it, I mean, look, let's look at column, you know, column 16. And there's not, I mean, there's just not a lot there. There's, you know, this assumes that everybody that has Baltimore takes Baltimore. That might not be the case. It might be the case. But um, if I were to get to week 16 with, players with other unique paths, I would like to have an advantage on them and not just, you know, we all take Tennessee. 
you know, like, you know, if there's a way to, you know, get uh, Kansas City there, you know, I don't have Kansas City. Only one person does. You see, it's the one red box there. But I'm looking at, I'm looking for key weeks that I can lay down the hammer and have a unique pick from the field. And hopefully that they are more favorited than the other teams that, you know, that, that are going to be picked in that week. So you have, you have, two, um, you have three entries, the top three here. No, the top two, the top two, top two. Um, I, I mean, look at, look at week, look at week 12. Week, week 12 is very, very interesting. Um, it's extremely interesting. Now that, you know, there are P I put all, I put everybody that has Miami available. Miami is going to be the largest favorite in week 12. Um, you can almost just completely discount Kansas city because only one person has them. They'll probably, they, they'll probably take them because you know, it's, it's a unique pick. I, like if you can take Kansas, if this person can take Kansas city in 12 and they're the only one that can do it. And all these people, you know, a lot of people are going to take Miami in my, in my pool um, because a lot of people are going to use San Francisco this week. So the, the San Francisco's are, 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 are listed out there in, in column 16. So I, I work back and forth on this, but I'm looking specifically for for different weeks that I have I, I, I can pivot to I can pivot and drop to save something for later. And my my and, and this and this is very relevant to not just this week, but really more so next week. I think the path to victory for my pool is Minnesota. Um, I, I I think Minnesota is the most important team for me because I'm not dropping off of Baltimore. I'm choosing not to do that. Um, I don't have San Francisco. I don't have Kansas city. I'm not using my last Buffalo. Um, I don't have Philly. I would basically, I would have to drop to a three point favorite and I'm not, I, and we're not going to do that. So our Baltimore, th that's it. That's what we got. Um, and that's the only way that'll change is if there is a starting quarterback change and it'd have to be for a bad team. That's currently a three point favorite that jumps up to like a seven or something. Um, our, our other, our other key team is Dallas. Um, D Dallas is our hammer team. So what we want to do is we want to have differing picks from the people that have Dallas and Minnesota remaining when wait, possible. I have, wait, wait, I have a dumb question to clarify. Yeah. The first entry yeah. up here on the top. Yeah. That burned Buffalo, I presume, right? Correct. Okay. Keep going. Mm -hmm. um, we want to differ our entries from the people that have Dallas and Minnesota. If we have identical picks to those players, then we'll get to those weeks. And yeah, the, Dallas could win, but you know, we would be picking along with the people that have them. And then we would all advance assuming Dallas wins. Uh, so the only weeks that we're willing to differentiate are going to be weeks 12 and 13. And I know I'm speaking a little ahead, but this now I'm going to tie it back, go back to week 11, this, but the forward thinking of what you're going to do in, in future weeks is very important at this point for what you're going to do in the current week. Extremely important. Uh, there's a, you have a lot less teams available. Um, you're going to have a lot less opportunities to, you know, make up ground. Um, this is also the point of the pool where, I mean, there's 17 people up, but this is not a poker tournament. You know, this started with 1200 people. When you get down to the final 17 in a poker tournament, that's really exciting. I mean, you're making, you're already making money. The final table is just around the corner. Um, and you can, you know, you can get first, second, thir first through 17th. And this one, if no one wants to make a deal, it would be first only. And, as, you know, even though we're 10 weeks in, this might go another six, seven weeks. Um, and this is where you're going to see players start to get a little conservative. They're, they taste it. They feel that it's really close. And they are. But when you have a, a, multiple players with that conservative thinking, they start grouping onto the same teams and it becomes very obvious which those teams are. And you have really good opportunities to, uh, you know, you know, to really take advantage of that by getting on a unique team. Um, like week 12, you know, 
we're going to take a if we're there with two entries, we're going to take a, a Buffalo probably and a Miami, or we're going to drop and hold our Buffalo. But most people so you, don't have so that. You don't, so you do you have two Miamis available or just the one? One, okay. just one, just one. Now Miami on its own is a it's a questionable pick because there I think over half the people are going to have them. Um, but you'd be far better off dropping to a three or you know a three or four point favorite. Um, but l- now let's go back to this week because uh, I, I really I wanted to. I know it's easier for me to understand in my head than see it, but visualize what your opponents have and start making predictions on what they're going to take. Work backwards and use that information to decide what you're going to pick. And now going over this week's picks, I like Philadelphia the most. If you have Philadelphia, I would almost certainly take it. I, I'd be very confident that's probably the best pick uh, for you, almost regardless of what, other, what teams you've taken up until this point. Um, San Francisco, uh, San Francisco, if you have not, uh, you know, you look at next week, I mean, you know, San Francisco is a really good play for next week. Look at how many players in your pool have Miami left. How many have San Francisco left? Um, do you have, um, New Orleans? If you have New Orleans, you can take New Orleans this week and save San Francisco for next week. Um, but you have to look a week or two ahead. I'm not worried about San Francisco for week 16. Your pool is going to get there, but, you know, I wouldn't worry about that. But Sam, you have to consider what you're going to do next week. Don't just blindly take San Francisco this week and then get to next week. And you're like, Oh shoot, I got to take the jets. Well, no, you don't have, you you have to take the jets now, but you could have not taken San Francisco last week and taken San Francisco in 12. Right. Um, that, that's where the, a lot of your decisions are going to be made. If you have San Francisco available, though, I would take San Francisco over Baltimore. Probably, you know, if I had if I had San Francisco available, I'd be taking San Francisco. I'll, I'll just put it. I would. There. I would. I would. Yes, again, I, I'm a little greedy. I I would want to save Baltimore if I could. Yeah, you're you're fortunate. No, I know I'm agreeing. If I you're, if I you're, for, Francisco, you're fortunate in your pools and you have no options. I mean, like you you can't correct. Yeah, yes, <laughs> I mean, no, but I'm saying though, I would right. if I had the two teams, I would take San Francisco and say Baltimore. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I would never take you no know, Kansas City. I would never take. I you know, if you if you got here this far, just you d- don't do it. Just yeah. do not do it. I mean, they're like a six and a half point favorite. Take. Take New Orleans. I mean, most people have not taken New Orleans. The only time to take New Orleans was in week one. I mean, I know that because I – Because like, you know, it's I my took, only I pool that was alive was the one that started that, with New Orleans. That, that's it. Mine too. These, these are my New Orleans entry pools. Right. So I can't even take New Orleans. Um, so if you, have, if, you, if you have New Orleans, you should be taking New Orleans over Kansas City. You should yeah. be taking New Orleans over Buffalo, you know, you know if, if you have the choice. Uh, because – Remember, I'm going to keep saying this to re- reiterate the point because it's very important. It doesn't matter that, like, my pool has lost over 1,100 people. There's still 17 people left. Yep. And when I look, going back to my map, assuming my team wins, there, the absolute best case scenario, I'm just guessing here, would be if we played to the end so there was one person left, with the, with what with what I'm going to take, because I'm not going to like go insane here and just start taking three point favorites and hope everyone loses. But other people are going to have my teams. I'm never going. I'm not going to have a solo pick that's a really good pick that you consider a really good pick until at least week 14. So it's going to take at least four weeks, um, and and that's in a best case scenario. Your pool is going to keep going if you know if you're not allowed to make a deal. Or if you're not going to want to make a deal or someone's not going to want to make a deal, play as if it's going to end in week 16. That you, if you use that thinking, you will put yourself in a much better position. You would much rather take a four-point favorite now, trust me, and have a 13-point favorite in week 16. You'll be so much happier. And if you lose, you're not going to care. I mean, like once you get to week 16 – hypothetically and when you're out and you see that you know you know Baltimore is like a 13 point favorite 
you're going to realize, oh, my God, that would have been incredible. This, this wine that you couldn't have hedged by taking whoever they're playing that week with the points. Um, you're going to the, the other players are going to be like they're going to be they're going to be dropping or they're going to be on a big group on Seattle or something. And in, in, in like in one of these weeks or like the Jets and they're going to be miserable. And not only not only going to be miserable, they're going to they're going to have a 60 percent chance of winning. And a lot of people are going to have them. Um, you want to be on, you want to set yourself up in the later weeks to be on a, on a, on a really good unique team. Um, otherwise you're going to have to drop anyway to, to get on that. Just get, just get it over with this. Just, just get it over with. So let's now go back to my original idea. All right. So, so mm -hmm. all, of, all of the things that we just discussed, all presumed one reality, all presumed that the person listening to our speech does not have Cincinnati available. Okay, so so I think we have to treat Cincinnati in its own tier. So Cincinnati is the only team, I think, that you can drop to, to sit for the purposes of saving Baltimore, right? So if you do have both Baltimore and Cincinnati available, I, it does become a, a challenging decision because I know it was going to be challenging for me. And I really don't – and I think that the answer is um, it really depends on how many people there are left in your pool. You know, like if, if you have yeah. still like 100 people left or 70 people left, I probably I would recommend going the Cincinnati route. Um, but if you're down to just, you know, a handful, you probably should just take the EV and just take Baltimore. Um, that's that's my what, what are your thoughts? Like, put yourself in my let, let's say you had Baltimore still available, but you also had Cincinnati. Yeah. What would you do? Um, you're not gonna like my answer. I, I would, I would just take Washington. Washington. I mean, I, I, yeah, you know, just because. And the reason for that, I, I'm just like no one's, no one else is gonna pick Washington. And you know, you, you just, I, I didn't want to ask how many people are left because you're just asking. Well, too I, much I, to I, think will, about. I show here that Washington's gonna be higher picked than since. Yeah, I'm seeing that too, but I don't, I don't believe that. Um, I, I just. Um, I, I, I'm going to look at my pools and I'm going to, the thing is because Cincinnati is a lot less owned, but what, what I feel that happens and I've seen this, this, you know, this year is when people are dropping, they, they cancel out the teams that they can't take and they're going to save. And the first team they see is the one that they're going to pick. Especially like that, when like they're that, like that, um, that Atlanta, thing. Atlanta week. Yeah. With Atlanta. Like no, there, no, there has to be a gap. Obviously, there has to be right. a gap. But uh, you know, here there is there a gap? It, it, it's there is. I mean, I think. Cincinnati I mean, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Not only are they above the other teams when I sort my point spread, but I don't know. They're playing Pittsburgh, who people just feel suck. I mean, they do have a higher win percentage too. So right. Cincinnati will be higher picked than Washington um, and, and Atlanta. They 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 just will be. I, I, that's why I don't like looking at the pick percentages here. Um, I don't know. I just feel as though Washington Atlanta is like hundred percent available where, where Cincinnati just isn't. It is, but you're looking at, uh, you're just looking at the mentality that I'm thinking and I'm, and I'm biased as I'm looking at, you know, first I've seen this before, but I'm looking at the one from a few weeks ago where 24 people in circa dropped every, no one had to Now they had to, if they wanted to have someone for Thanksgiving, but no one had to drop, in that week in a vacuum right 24 people chose to and half of those people took atlanta right. they were a four and a half point favorite and they're a bunch of they're a bunch of three and a half threes and two and a half um so i it's a very small sample but i think that's pretty powerful i mean they're they're they were equally picked to a group of pretty much five or six teams um and and, and that i think a lot goes with that um you can also look at it in. Remember, we 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 picked the teams that we took that week because of their unused their unavailability in later weeks. You know, you just when are you going to take Jacksonville? You know, Indianapolis has changed their quarterback to a guy who's never played before. I mean, you got to assume they're going to suck. Hopefully, they just suck just you know, you know, just to squeak it out. Um, you know, what Cincinnati? You know, they could be a they could be a, a play for someone in fourteen. Um, we're no not, not if you were I, like me and had Buffalo and Dallas available. <laughs> that's no, that's true. But um, I, so I'm not. actually recommending. Yeah. One, one of my friends is still in a pool, and I'm recommending to him that 
you know, he could – we're looking – my partner and I are trying to help him find a way to make up the most ground. There's like a, right. uh, I don't know, 50 people left, and he, he's, got a, he's got a really good entry, right. really good entry. And my partner is saying that he should take Cincinnati this week and not Baltimore. And I'm saying I think he should take Baltimore and then just and then take Cleveland and then take uh, and then take like and take Cincinnati in week 14 where no one have, to have take You don't have to take Cincinnati at all if you don't want to. No, but but he has Buffalo and then he could use Buffalo in week 16. That's you know, true. like because no one's going to have that either. It's like if if, if the pool's good. The point is if the pool is go. If you knew the pool's going to go to a certain week play for that. And sometimes right. you can, I mean, like if someone's going to have identical picks to you, or if, if three people just do, cause the, you're, 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 you got these big gaps between the, the, the highest favor in the, in the next group. And, and, and I'm going to do it. I mean, you could tell me every person's taking Baltimore this week. I'm still going to do it. Cause I, I'm just not going to drop to a three point favorite. I would rather get to week 16 and, and be annoyed about it or upset that I, d- I didn't like drop to save. Because that, that for me that's just that's just too much. Um, I, I have other. I feel we can make up the ground more in week twelve or week thirteen by dropping there, and we have a really strong position in week fourteen, and we're going to have a really strong position with Minnesota in in fifteen or sixteen. Um, it's going to require us to drop in thirteen, but if we have Minnesota there, that's that's good enough, you know, for us. Um, so. Just because we're at a certain number doesn't mean it's close to being over. It, 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 it's, it's a single payout. You're playing till it's over. Play. A, this is the best time to play aggressively. Um, it's just like poker. Don't don't get to the you know the final twelve when you're playing shorthand on two tables and start playing conservative to hope to make the final table. Yeah. This is the time to to to, to lay down the gas. Um, we're probably going to drop in week twelve. Um, we're probably going to pick a three point favor in week 12 as, as the spreads are right now and save our Buffalo. Cause you, it, you have to do something otherwise we're, if we get there, we're going to be more or less like everybody else with the same exact teams. And, 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 and if you look at that spreadsheet, everyone has those teams. Everybody has Tennessee. Everybody has the jets. Everybody has Seattle. Everyone has the, and a lot of people have the giants and that's not very attractive, to, attractive to us. Um, and I'd rather not take an underdog. Um, so I'd rather just, you know, f- try to find a way to get to the later weeks with, with Minnesota or Buffalo. And that, and that's, that's what we're going to try to do, but we're just going to have to take Baltimore this week. We, we just have nothing to drop to. Um, but look, look, look at next week because next week's going to, will help you decide, well, should I take San Francisco or not? Um, if you have Kansas city, I mean, they're a very good play next week. Uh, they're they're very unavailable, and they're like a ten and a half point favorite. Um, the other thing to look at is injuries at this point of the season. Um, uh, Cooper Cup's not playing a game the rest of the year. Um, he, he just he's not going to. He's. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I thought this two days ago. Once they said he had a high ankle sprain, and you look, you know, if they, I'm like, if they lose it, I told my partner, if they lose the next game or two, they're going to hang him up. Like, what's the point of him playing? Um, but it, it makes, uh, and then, and then my partner, Jesse got excited. He's like, Oh, well we have green Bay. Only four people have green Bay. And he found this, um, green Bay plays the Rams in week, uh, in week 15. So at that point, I mean, Cooper cups, you know, you know, done playing for the year. Maybe, you know, the Packers won last week. Maybe they turn things around. We have, we have a we have a good spot you know where we don't need to have Minnesota for both of our entries there you know we, we can hope that Green Bay becomes a real uh, you know a good pick and no one else has them I mean it's just four of us and we have two of them um, so start looking out for the teams that that are caving you know giving in and just waving the white flag these spreads don't update on on here you know so you really want to look closely to see if anything is going to open up preferably, you know, for a team that's, you know, but if everybody has the team, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But for us, Green Bay just seemed like, Oh, this, this sucks. I mean, how are we going to use them unless it's week 18? Oh, you'll, then, you'll, then, if, if it's, if, if there's, st- if you're still around in week 18 and the pool's still going, that's a, that's a nice hammer to have. Well, no, it is, but like, that's all we had. And then, right. you know, and then Cooper cups, cups her like, Oh, wait a minute. This could be a, 
Yeah. This could be a great pick to, you know, to yeah. count on. And, and we're using that yeah. to help us play more, you know, you know, more conservative and aggressive in other weeks leading up to, because we, we could have that right there. All right. Well, listen, I guess uh, we are uh, rooting for Baltimore this week. Is that safe to say? Yeah, it, it would take it, someone's someone's got to change the starting quarterback or um, for a, there's no. Yeah, we're, we're taking Baltimore. Never know. All right. Well, so what, uh, do you want, do you want, wait, do you want to, well, let's talk briefly about oh. next week because uh, oh, okay. we're cool. not going to put one out. The next games are on Thanksgiving. Oh, no, we can, we can find we can find some time. But we got to put we would have to put it up before. So we'll do it Tuesday then. Okay, then and then hang it up. Okay, that, that we can do Tuesday. Yeah, we'll do it. That's gonna because uh, because uh, that's that's a big one because the uh, Buffalo's the opening opening uh, opening. We'll do game it Wednesday, wherever you want. I'm 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 around. Cool. Let's uh, let's let's do it. All right, go Baltimore. See ya.